I've been southbound, I've been hellbound, riding on the midnight train. Going too fast now, think I'll slow down, standing in the pouring rain. Three, two, one. <laughs> What's going on, guys? It's Tristan, and Tony's over there somewhere with the One Hell of a Life Outdoor Podcast, and we got we had a whole crew with us today, so I'll give you guys a little uh, background of what we're doing. We're down here in Florida, um, kind of around the Gainesville area, I guess, but we're hunting with some guys that were uh, we've connected through social media over the years and finally got together over all this time to be able to hunt together, and it's uh, something we've been looking forward to and planning for a long time. So we got uh, Dylan Dildine, who is uh, the owner of Cut'em Boy Outfitters, and we got Ryan Manfredi, who's the owner of Marsh Runner Guide Service, and they're kind enough, kind enough to bring us out hunting today. And uh, we got Drew down here, and we got Dalton. Um, Y'all know Dalton; he's been on the podcast and filmed with us and stuff. But uh, yeah, guys, thank you for um, you know having us out, and we're excited to get get you on the podcast. And definitely, BS, definitely. BS a little bit. Thanks for having us, bro. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. man. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. I mean, shoot, we've been planning coming down for like what, probably four or five months. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, it takes some time. I mean, everybody getting busy. It's hard to it's hard to get everybody in one place at one time. Yeah, yeah. Yep. no, absolutely. And like uh, the thing this weekend, like y'all listen to this that are from Florida know like this just storm or whatever it's been rolling through you don't plan on it no <laughs> no you don't plan on it. i mean you plan something for months and it just it turns into a, a rainy day that you know it just it just kind of happens yeah by the well i guess um before we get too far just so like people know like who's talking or whatever and all that so let's get back to that in a second but let's start with i guess we can just start with dylan uh dylan so tell everybody you know just a little bit about you and all that stuff, where you're from, you know, and uh, uh, so people know who the voice yeah, is, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We're originally from Fernandina Beach. Mm-hmm. Um, we're just a couple country boys out there that, mm-hmm. you know, all grew up together, kind of like y'all, you know, kinda, yeah. and we hunt together mm-hmm. and went to school together. And uh, we were sitting uh, blind one day and kind of just wanted to, you know, let's make a couple t-shirts you know mm-hmm. i don't know we were all we all wear t-shirts and it kind of just grew into this thing you know into like a clothes a big clothing brand and i would say a big clothing brand but i mean uh we're doing good and uh the hunting aspect of it you know we love it we live eat like eat breathe mm-hmm. bleed it you know and uh whenever me and ryan met uh we kind of kind of just clicked so and we all we all live in florida so and it was last season wasn't it La, uh, beginning of last yep, season beginning of last season yep and uh we all live in florida and we all pretty much know F- florida pretty well you know i mean mm-hmm. and we know we know a lot of people around the area so i mean we all talk and we try and help each other out you know i mean yeah. it's, it's it's we all kind of call each other after hunt like hey you know what'd you kill what'd you see you know what i mean mm-hmm. so and we kind of got into it a little more deep in the last two years and mm-hmm. i would say and uh and we kind of did the clothing brand starting out, you know. We got some more stuff coming out here soon. So yeah. uh, if y'all haven't seen these hoodies, that he needs to get back in stock. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. We can't keep them on the shelf. We can't keep them on the shelf. But uh, once we uh, once we kind of connected, man, we we just started hunting all the time. It was like a every weekend thing, you know, and mm. and and. Uh, Ryan, you know, he's a pretty good guy. He, he really knowledgeable about about hunting and I've learned a lot from him. And uh basically, you know, we we don't kill him all the time, but we're we're, we're out here having fun. You know That's what I mean? If we about. don't kill him, it's it kind of like today, you know what I mean? We we went out there and that that to us is hunting. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's that's hunting. We saw plenty of birds. That's right. Yeah, that's Four or right. 500, but yeah. And we right. shot some, but yeah. It, it's that. I mean, we pull limits, but it's it's not like we pull. I mean, it's not an everyday thing. We have to work for it down here in Florida. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, Florida is a different breed, and I will say that you know, we don't call as much down here. You know what I mean? We don't. We're not hunting rice fields. You know, we're just. This is stuff that we've trampled three, four hundred yards in the woods and found. You right. know what I mean? Like, it's hard work. You know, so when we when we, whenever we kill and we bring home and we harvest. It's more a little bit. It's a little bit more rewarding, I yeah. will say. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And uh, I think that's uh, what we've been doing is just having fun and 
sticking with it you know what i mean there's nothing uh nothing else we'd rather be doing i'd say hell yeah with them being in the woods no that's i mean that's beautiful and um y'all are doing a good job i mean you both are killing it and um we're excited to you know share some time with y'all um ryan will you kind of go into a little bit of just like your background i know like y'all are both like floridians and you know been here for a long time and Oh, well, you go into your background a little bit and kind of with the duck hunting and all that stuff, yep, too. Yep. I grew Did up you... in uh, South Florida, yep. and we hunted the Everglades, me and mm-hmm. Dad, you know, back in the early 90s, and uh, there was a lot more ducks back then, it seemed like, <laughs> but uh, shot mainly ringnecks and teal, yep. and we moved up here, and I started scouting around, found some spots, and mm-hmm. that's how we've been killing them now. Started shooting wood ducks, mm-hmm. you know, we didn't really have a lot of them down south, mm-hmm. and uh, now I chase puddle ducks mainly, so. And that's your bread, bread and uh, that's my butter. Bread and butter. Yep. yep, that's that's awesome, man. Well, I want y'all to kind of go into. I know you just said it a minute ago, but like, I, I've said it, but y'all know it better than we do. I mean, y'all are down here all the time. Like, why is Florida such a hard state to duck hunt? You know, like what are some of the like factors? I mean, we got alligators. One, we got they water get hit everywhere the whole way they, down here. Yeah, yeah. So y'all die. <laughs> they get of, shot at the whole way. <laughs> yeah, it's the last stop. Yeah, it is. They've it seen is. it all. They've seen <laughs> it all, dude. It I mean, they've seen every mojo out there. They've seen mm-hmm. those uh, jerk rigs. They've seen it. You know what I mean? So by the time they get to us, it's like certain days we can throw a mojo out or, mm-hmm. you know, and they won't even come to the spread because the mojo's there. Or it's like sometimes you got to do things different. You got to take the mojo out. You know, we don't throw a, like... You see guys, I mean, I'm not talking down to any any hunter, but you see guys throwing out 100 decoys, and we throw out four or five decoys. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's realistic. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, and that's how... It, it's it's hard hunting. I mean, like, like, we don't call as much. We don't... There's, there's no bait involved. Yeah. <laughs> so, and these birds get shot at the whole way. So, if if anything, whatever we harvest out of Florida... I think we're doing pretty good because mm-hmm. I mean those birds have seen it all. Yeah, no, especially like when you start talking about like your pintails, your widgeon, yep. like some of these other birds, like smart because, birds. I mean, I mean y'all know like teal ringnecks, wood ducks, like the whistling ducks. Like there's a lot of model ducks. Those are like kind of the most common things. But like the when I see somebody like get something like that, it's like you know it's like wow you know because it's yeah. just you don't. Like, people from the Midwest or wherever you duck hunt, like, you don't get it. Like, it's hard to get those kind of birds down here. And it's really just lucky, you know, even a shoveler. I mean, shoot. Yep, yep. I don't know how many people I've talked to from Florida that are like, man, I just want to shoot a nice shoveler. It's like, yep, yep. dude, just go to the Mississippi Flyway and yep. you'll get it in no time. I shot one last week and it was like, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But, you know, it's just a different, completely different animal. You never know what, like, species is going to hit the hole. You really never. You, woody's, teal, ringers. yeah. Well, that's what kind of uh, bluebills, you know, they, all types. Yeah. No, for sure, man. And that's like why I think me and my dad like got our our love for like duck hunt is like that mixed bag aspect, you know. Like, I'm not the guy that's like, oh, I want to shoot four greenheads or whatever. Like, I'm cool with cool with that. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'd love to do that <laughs> yeah, one day, no but uh, it's just like that mixed bag, and you never know what you're gonna get. Kind of like fishing in a way, you know. You never know what you're gonna get. Like. Yeah. Uh, I love that aspect of it. And Florida yeah. provides a great opportunity for that, you know? Yeah. 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 I think uh, I think weather has a lot to do with it in Florida, too. Mm-hmm. So we get a lot of rain here, sure. you know what I mean? Like, and, it, and the thing is, is sometimes it'll rain for, what, 10 minutes and stop? Sometimes it'll, it'll rain for... Rain yeah, too. and it'll be, it'll be a hard rain. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I'm not no biologist or anything on these birds but i mean i i, I kind of get the drift of when it's 10 to 20 mile an hour the birds are going to want to fly lower you know what i mean and when it's overcast they can kind of see a little bit more mm-hmm. and out here it's a little tough you know it's it's uh when you're hunting the marshes there's not much cover you know what i mean mm-hmm. we we usually what cut palm fronds, palm fronds stuff like that and uh try and cover the boat and and keep us keep us uh covered up but i mean it's it's just it's it's a little difficult it's a little different and uh, for one thing whenever you uh whenever somebody's wanting to book a hunt florida is probably not going to be their first choice you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so like on a guided hunt but the thing is 
I think Florida is a hidden gem. Do you? I mean, yeah. I, mean I think it is, and, and I, I think if uh, if more people would, I mean. I mean, I wouldn't say more people. I, I think if they would look at it differently, you know, that uh, they would see it. They would see it well, like we see it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think you know one guy that's really big on this is like Ramsey Russell. Like, I don't know if y'all follow any of his stuff, but that man travels all over the world, and it's about yeah. the experience. To have, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. And uh, you know, if you're looking to experience something completely different that you're not used to, I mean. You know, like today we're out hunting with, um, you know, waist deep in lily pads, yep. you know, and some like saw grass and might be an alligator out there. You never know. Like it's a little yeah, bit yeah, different, yeah. you know, and like. You see a lot of eyes out there, but I mean, when it's cold, hopefully they ain't moving as fast. But. And, you know, one thing that I, I've always told people about if you want to, like how many people vacation to Florida in the winter? It's like, dude, if you're a duck hunter coming from up north. Hey, guess what? You don't have to freeze your ass off. You can like yep, go that's right. hop in on a duck hunt while your family goes to Disney. It's December. World or it was what fifty eight this morning. So yeah, that's not bad. No, exactly. So it's like, what greater sales pitch? And then you know, there's fishing opportunities, all kinds yep, of stuff. Yep. So yep. Um, that's another thing. Mm-hmm. You know, y'all might want to hit Ryan up for. Uh, yeah, yep. he does the the guide service, but tell him about that fishing too. Yeah, we can go shoot divers and we can go catch a couple of redfish or some trout or whatever yep. when we're done. Do the casting blast thing. Yep, they're definitely there. Yeah, it's no, easy to do. That's awesome. And will you tell everybody kind of where you're located? You know, so if people listening like want a book or whatever. I live in Bronson. Yep. So uh, it's near Gainesville. Mm-hmm. So pretty much anywhere in that area, I've got spots all over, depending on where the birds are at. So heck yeah, man. Yeah, no. If uh, if y'all are looking just to experience something different, I mean, why not? You know, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a completely different different thing. And then I was I, one thing I always think is neat too is like. I know the fulvia is not so much like up in this area, but like the opportunity to get a modeled or whistling duck, like yeah. people that are trying to kill your 41 duck species, you got to do that somewhere or whatever, whatever. Exactly, north, exactly. Isn't it 41 in North America or something or 42, um, 27? I don't know. I don't know. There's something like that. But if you're trying to kill all of them, you got to do it anyway. Yeah, yeah so. exactly. I mean, <clears throat> book a trip. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the best way to, to describe it. Book a trip and... You'll probably want to come back. I mean, I mean, it's a, it's all about the experience. We will not see another hunter. That's my favorite part. We yeah, yeah, yeah that's morning. right. We yeah, didn't see true. nobody this morning. I don't see a duck hunter all year unless I want to. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's. We right. don't like fighting people at the boat yeah. ramps either. You Nobody know? hates a duck hunter as much as another duck hunter. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, right? It's yeah. like shoot, man. It's yeah. uh, it's. Williamson Outfitters, located along the beautiful coast of Florida, is a premier guide service with lodging that provides incredible coastal duck hunting, gator hunting, fishing, gigging, scalloping, and custom boat tours along Florida's forgotten coast. They are family-owned and operated with over 200 years of combined experience hunting and fishing along this incredible stretch of Florida. Captain Chris runs a first-class operation. On a coastal duck hunt, you have an incredible chance at many rare species of diver ducks and several puddle duck species. Have you ever heard of Chase Landry from Swamp People? How'd you like to have him as your guide duck hunting this year? Also featured this month, celebrity chef Amadeus will be there for a meet and greet, and DUTV will be filming an episode, so stay tuned for that. To book an experience you can savor for a lifetime, you can call or text Captain Chris at 850-251-8650, or you can go to floridaducks.com and check available dates for all their services. Don't wait, they book up fast just one of those things but yeah uh so what what has been like y'all give a story about y'all's favorite hunt together like you're if you had to pinpoint like y'all's favorite hunt y'all two both were there we had a pretty good one this year with them blue wings yeah down there on the marsh yep yep the, um in the woody hole i've the, killed the, enough woodies they don't yeah. really get me too excited anymore nah, they're always fun they're always fun, they're always fun. they're early if you want to if you want to uh go home and be home at 7 30 8 o'clock we can we yeah, can we do can that, that. Yep. If you want to sit in the in the hole, you know, for a couple hours, we yeah. can do that. But um, I think uh, out there on the marsh, uh, probably shooting those teal, shooting those teal, because uh, we, I think we That's got out I there. Yeah, we got out there and had we Colt. had Colt. Had and we didn't. We we thought, you know, it. Every scenario you go hunting, you're always like, oh, this is going to be a banger, man. This is going to yeah. be a banger, you know? And, and we go into it because we always want to have fun. And and so we got out there, mm-hmm. didn't see anything for a little while, did, right? We didn't really see anything. And uh, all of a sudden, 
here come here a big come. flock of blue rings and they kind of hit i think they hit the spread didn't they yeah. and we we kind of lit them up and it cut them it up. was just yeah we <laughs> cut them up uh, it was it was just uh i don't know man the fellowship and the time that we spend together is uh it's an experience dude it's really it's a bond type of thing you know what i mean mm -hmm. and uh our side i will say the east coast we're still east coast because it's florida but the the east coast over in fernandina is harder mm -hmm. hunting uh we kind of we're kind of in that dip right yeah. there too we're not really on the flyway and if we if the birds that do fly by us they're flying right by us and, they, and they're not stopping because there's no food yep too much salt in our area mm -hmm. and uh a lot of there's three or four mills there's 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 two mills right there in, in the area mm -hmm. and uh and it brings in a bunch of that black sludge it kind of messes up the, the the habitat you know yeah. what i mean so when i met ryan uh he said, "Come over here, dude. We're gonna yeah, go we, go into that a little bit. Yeah, like, how'd y'all like, connect?" And stuff. When all right, so we kind of met on social media, like mm -hmm. on Instagram. Well, that's and, I mean, that's how we met. And yeah, yeah I know. And and that, to me, that's what it's all about: the mm -hmm. fellowship, the people you meet, the connections you meet, the time you. When you look back, you know what I mean. You mm -hmm. have something to tell your kids. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. I have one on the way. So, oh, uh, yeah. congrats, dude. Yeah, Dang. man, I got one on the way. So. I think uh, I'll be able to tell him something and show him something. And uh, so when, whenever we met, I'll go back, get back on that. Whenever yeah. we met, um, we met on Instagram. Okay. And uh, I wasn't really killing no birds over there. wasn't really finding no birds. And Ryan, this is how Ryan is, is literally the nicest guy. Give you the shirt off his back. Like, was, come over here. You know what I mean? Like, That's come kill awesome, birds man. with me. You know? And... Uh, when it, when he said that, it kind of like it hit home, you know, like dang, you know, like not many people will yeah. do that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So uh, we kind of hunted the woody hole, didn't we? Yeah, we hunted the woody hole and uh, shot a five man. Yep, shot a five man the first day and wow. could have wow. killed him and could have wow. kept killed him. And uh, it was just fun, man. And uh, ever since then, we kind of connected, dude. And uh, I've been coming back. We've been killing birds. We, he's been guiding mm -hmm. and. Uh, like say on a guide if the if a client would like film you know i could i could film for him yeah and uh we edit it or give it to him raw uh and and i'm kind of there you know what i mean i'll get my limit too so mm -hmm. it's it's kind of just it's kind of been fun you know mm -hmm. what i mean it's that that and that that's what it's all about yeah so, like this morning this morning was fun man yeah, yeah. dude we, we were all um, laughing all morning yeah cutting oh, yeah. up cracking jokes yep. and even I mean, we seen a lot of birds and, and we had some some flare, mm -hmm. some fly right to that like that one that Dude, flew right at our back. I so. might even <laughs> plan, bro. We were so like it kind of was like a little lull. So like we were just kind of like I don't even know. I think I was on my phone and like right what? to our back and <laughs> it's stuff like that that's like well you know well that's we, a bird we could yeah we could have killed him you know? but and but it's it, it was all fun man and mm. we're in the hole we're we're doing what we're supposed to be doing you know yeah. what i mean we're not out it's not like we're out doing bad things you know we're out we're out hunting you know what i mean yeah. we're out having fun yeah. with with friends man and uh and also taking others on to own experiences, you know, yeah, the, the clients that he brings in that I meet that I don't know at all, mm -hmm. you know, literally like we beat on at a boat ramp or something. You know what I mean? Like at four o'clock in the morning, we're meeting at a boat ramp. This yeah. is how it's going down. Like, and we meet these guys and, you know, they come out with us and they're cool people. You know yeah. what I mean? So we get to have fun with people that we don't even know. You yeah. know, and and we get to hunt with them. Most of them wind up being see, buddies. Yeah, yeah. And, and see and see like their experiences too, and 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 we all learn from each other. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? We kind of pick up on each other. No, that's right. Because I mean, you sit there and well, where are you from? How you do it? Where you're from? Yeah, you know? exactly, and exactly. Go over it, all that good stuff. Like how we were talking about earlier mm -hmm. about the Asian ducks. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Everybody does it differently. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we we set our ducks belly up seven days in the fridge you know what i mean yeah, like, right, yeah. <laughs> we don't touch them you know what i mean mm -hmm. and to us it's just a little bit better you know and yeah. other people they hang them you know what i mean mm -hmm. upstate i've heard of hanging 
ducks for two, three weeks before yeah. they even bust the breast open. You know what I mean? It's just apparently that whole Asian thing's like or aging thing. I think I said Asian thing. <laughs> that aging thing goes back to like a French practice. I was told. I don't know. I'm not that like deep I into know that it. You but, up. Yeah, you yeah. loved up. Yeah, duck fats like a you huge learn a thing lot, in man. There, like you learn a lot from a lot of people, and it's all about fun and learning the experience and and and, and all together. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. Now I tell you one thing that well, I'd be interested to get y'all's take on this. What's your all's take on a on a coot and a decoy spread? Being from Florida, depends on how hungry I am. Yeah, because yeah. the, well, the gizzards are good, man. Yeah, gizzards well, are good. I'm not talking about shooting a coot, but I mean like putting coot, coots out. Oh, we run a lot of coots. Yeah. yeah, I didn't this morning mm-hmm. because there's not a lot. Well, I mean, there. but and ringnecks, true, and yeah. But it, if I'm hunting somewhere with a lot of coots, you can't haul enough in your boat. Yeah, you know, put them out. That's kind of what I've gathered in my time here too. What have y'all like, heard about the if like if a coot's in like near the spread or in the hole, like is that good luck or is you know what I mean? I like anything in the spread, blue heron, whatever. That's all confidence for them. Yep. They yeah. see that and they're like, well, he's all right. Yeah, dude. Yep. I mean, I haven't seen it so much in Florida, but I have seen it like because I always tell people like when I'm trying to compare like my limited experience compared to the United States, like basically it's Mississippi Flyway and Florida. Um, you know, like South Georgia, but same, same difference. But, uh, you don't have birds work the same way here. I mean, those ringnecks that dropped down, they kind of did, but like, yep. you know, in the Midwest or yeah, really Midwest Mississippi flyway, it's like you get these, you might get birds that drop out of the sky. They circle you multiple times yep. and then you decoy them or whatever. Uh, you don't really see that as much down here. And I forgot where I was going with that point, but basically that, <laughs> that no, it's just, it's completely different, yeah, you know, wherever you go, man. I guess. You we know? get Those teal will make a few passes on you. Yeah. Right. Everybody's got to stay still. Mm-hmm. Keep your head down. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, hard with that uh, overcast. You gotta, you mm-hmm. have to stay still. Yeah. And when them birds are flying low, you oh. know, they flare up. Sorry. I remember my, what I was going to say. So we were talking about the confidence thing. Yeah. So I've seen a couple times out there anyway, like, and y'all may have seen this here. Y'all hunt a lot more than we do down here. But like when, let's say, for example, some ducks are working your decoys and then it's like two of them that are like landing. Then like the group sees it and then they're like, we're going, you know, yeah, like yeah. have y'all observed? Oh, yeah. Similar a lot stuff? of times me and Warren out there will have mm-hmm. two or three land and the big, big ones are still up top mm-hmm. and we'll just let them chill. And yeah, see. yeah. Yeah. If they leave, we'll kill them ones in the decoys. Yeah. But, whenever they oh, leave, yeah. we'll kill them. But. And then sometimes you get greedy and everything leaves. And you <laughs> yeah, <out>. that's <laughs> just risk you got to take. Right? Hey, live yeah. decoys are good too. I mean, yeah. mm-hmm. they work. Yeah, you were telling me something. Uh, I don't know. I don't think this was before. It was before we started the podcast, right? About like what y'all used to do way back in the day in the Everglades. Oh yeah, dude, tell, talk about that. Back I think in it's the day, neat. Yeah. before motion and all that, when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. We go and buy this thing. It was called a weasel ball. I don't know what everybody else called it. That's what it's called. You buy it at the mall. Mm-hmm. It's like a kid's toy. Mm-hmm. We'd fill a decoy up. We'd cut his back open, fill it up with expanded foam, put that ball in there, and it'd shake that decoy on the water. And they wanted it, man, because they'd never seen it. That's wild. It was brand so new wild. back then. That is. Dude. I mean, that was a secret weapon. That's, down a, there. that's a redneck ingenuity. Right yeah, there, right. Yep. It's the little things. Man. A lot of ducks over stuff like that. Just like the, I don't know, now I'm seeing on the TikTok, mm-hmm. the. Uh, the zip ties and the mojos. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like always oh, trying to do something different than the other guy. Yeah. Well, that's one thing I wanted to see if y'all had ran across is um, that bluebird waterfowl animator. The thing, the it's a uh, basically it sticks on your mojo wing and it's a uh, lucky duck too. Um, and it's like a pole, a real light pole with like a puck on it. And it's like, pop, 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 pop. so it kind of makes the sound of like wings flapping a little bit, but it's, making ripples in ripples. the waters yeah. and uh the ripples kind of interact with you know whatever your other decoys and stuff but uh that's another similar product to like yeah. and i think mojo just actually came out with like a thing to compete with that but we've had a uh, george the bluebird guy on this podcast and it's a pretty interesting product i was just wondering if y'all ran across that that was one we have, haven't, but, seen it. Uh, I haven't seen it yeah. i might have to check it out it's interesting i mean yeah, it's yeah. different you know i mean and if people aren't using it, it might be worth looking at here. You know, I mean, we've used it in Arkansas a few times, and especially on dead days, you mm-hmm. know, and yeah, yeah. Um, you know, just to get any motion yep. you can, you know, yep, I mean, yep. that'd be the day to try it when things are slow, whatever. Mm-hmm. See so yeah. how they react to it. Exactly. Why not? Yeah. Sometimes you always got to like. I mean, sometimes you got to go out there and sh- shut the wings off on the mojo if mm-hmm. you don't have the transmitter, or you know. Yeah. But you got to shut the wings off and try something different, you know. If I know we're going to the X. And we're gonna kill birds. I don't mess with none of that. Don't gotta worry static about it. decoys. Let's just 
not mess him up with anything fancy. Yeah, yeah. Well, who's this What's guy? What's up? <laughs> Creep on in. I feel like <laughs> Creep on in. <laughs> we got we got some of these jokers coming What's in. What's up, guys? Outlaws. We got, we yeah, got yeah, Donald. Yeah, yeah. Donald, you want to hop on this bad boy? <laughs> I don't know what to talk about, but yeah. Well, we were just what are y'all talking about? Florida duck, duck hunt, man. It Florida sucks. Duck hunt. Sometimes. So, I wouldn't say it sucks, but I would say it's difficult. It's, it's been a slower year. It's been a slower. Out of the last five years, I'd say this year has been the slowest year. Yeah, y'all get into that a little bit because y'all, y'all three are Florida, you know, natives and locals and all that. I mean, uh, who knows what it is? I mean, you got to have bad years so you know what a good I know. year is. I mean, I don't know if it's the weather. I don't know. I mean, we we've all got people that we know up north that we talk to, mm-hmm. and from the people that I have talked to, that it's not even been that cold up yeah. there. You know what I mean? It's cold, but. It's not enough maybe to push them this south. I'm not sure. Or or we have missed them, and they're all in Cuba. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's I've, I've heard, you know, Florida, like, it's just a weird state when it comes to that because I know that you guys get a lot of those, like, October, November, like. Um... It's in the teens that morning, and maybe you're chasing ducks or geese. But now it's September, and it's 85 degrees, and you're hunting early teal or geese. As a waterfowler, you need dependable weather protection that will not break the bank. Founded in 1996, Frog Togs is not only the leader in breathable wader technology, but a company you can depend on to keep you warm and dry, head to toe, no matter your hunting environment. Stay bone dry by using discount code ZD315 for 15% off not only your first purchase, like most discount codes, but how about every single purchase you make from now until December 31st, 2024. What they call it, Halloween birds. You get mm-hmm. some of that going on, yeah, but yeah. Um, you know, it's like to get a good cold push. You're right. I mean, you got it. It takes a lot of cold up north to get a good cold push. Lately. I'll say this. I don't know who we got to talk to, mm-hmm. but um, Florida needs an extension on the uh, <laughs> on our season. I will say, but I wish they would bump it back. I really Start wish they would, man. But the, the thing is, is because by the time a season out, the season ends, mm-hmm. we're, that's when we're really seeing birds. Yeah. yeah. Like, and maybe because, the, you know, we've done got a, a few cold snaps. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. It seems every year, last day of season, there's more birds than you can count. And it's like, how many youths can we round up? You know, I know, right? Up? Yeah. How many youths can come back like, and Off of like breeding, like stuff like that, right? I mean, What's that? Sorry. I'm like your seasons go based off of like breeding and the, the migrations, right? I would imagine. Like nesting. I think it has to do with that. I yeah. would think so. So I, like, if you, I'm not against it by mm-hmm. no means, but I don't know. Maybe you'd have to like see like what, how that would affect all of that, man. Because the last time we want a little less of that. Yeah. 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 No, I know. And, I think uh, Arkansas was supposed to this year start their season like after Thanksgiving, but they changed their mind, I guess. Hmm. But it was supposed to start like so a little November. later. Yeah, instead of starting the nineteenth, it was going to start like the twenty fifth or something, like twenty hmm. six seventh or something like that. Maybe that's what we could do. Just a couple, even if it's a week, I'll take a week. I mean, <laughs> start it a week later. Yeah, and, and it, there you go. I mean, something. I mean, Birds ain't doing nothing but getting better looking. That's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure. Dude, that's what I'm saying, and that's another that's another freaking sweet thing about Florida is like, how many? I mean, I'm sure y'all have killed your fair share of good looking blue winged teal being down here. Like late in the season, it's really one of the They're only more places. more plum for sure. Yeah. yeah, one of the only places. That's that mainly you, what I chase here. Yeah. I'm around my lease and these woods here, and yeah, some good looking blue wings. It's one of the only places in the United States yeah. that you can get that opportunity. That's you know, right. Yeah. To shoot a nice blue. Wing. That's why I said, you know, just book a hunt. Mm-hmm. Somewhere, you know, it, it it doesn't even have to be with us. Yeah. But book a hunt. Set, you know, yeah, experience it, it for yourself. Yeah. Just right. don't move here. Yeah, yeah. don't move here. We're full. Yeah. We are full. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, uh, I'm originally from Illinois and we moved out. So, yeah. <laughs> so we helped y'all yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before the COVID phase. Yeah. The like, COVID phase is like the worst. Well, and, you know, we moved here in 2012 and we're here till 2021. So it's like we got almost got a decade in. So it's like <laughs> almost like legit. You're almost like a year of yeah. <laughs> So now, yeah, now I've been in Georgia for two years. So I don't know what to. I, I feel like Florida is my home more than Illinois, even though I was in Illinois for 15 years, but yeah. I don't know, man. Florida feels like home to everybody as soon as they come. I mean, that's why they stay. They come, visit, and then they, now they want to move here, you know? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. 
So Dalton, what's been up, man? It's been it's been a minute since you were y'all listening, we've had Dalton from Salty Shots Photography on the podcast before. It's been a minute and y'all have seen the videos he's done with us and stuff and what's going on, man? Well, it's been You got a kid now. <laughs> yeah, I think last time I was on, it was like right before I uh she was due and we was talking about that. But yeah, she's here and she runs and climbs and is into everything now it definitely <laughs> they all said it was gonna be easier like as it goes it absolutely not when they're newborn it's like you can just put them there and yeah. feed them and change them that's it <laughs> <laughs> as soon as they start moving it's that you're done yeah <laughs> <laughs> but no just you know trying to learn to be a dad and dealing with all my own stuff i've just kind of been laying low this year Dude. I've had a rough year, just like everybody else has, so just been chilling. Man, I've been shooting wood duck holes and easy hunts, eating hardies at 8.30 and <laughs> going back to sleep. That's what I've been doing. Dude, yeah. I feel so. like I got the uh, three, like... The three founding fathers here, like, <laughs> for, like, for like knowledge here on, on listen, <laughs> hear me out on this, <laughs> for knowledge on like hunting with kids because we got Ryan who's got a four year old, we got Dalton who's got less than a one year old, she's a one year old, one year old, and then you got one on yeah, the way, yeah, one on the way, one so. on the way. So I'm taking those. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what's actually super cool by it is my nephew mm-hmm. or my cousin, I guess he's my whichever he is. I don't even know. Uh-huh. That's Florida. Yeah, but uh. He got his first pair of waders today for Christmas early, and they sent me a picture. I actually just sent it to you. Um, your dad wants you to post it. Oh, so, you cool. know. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going to take him next week for his first time. And This is a little welcome in, welcome in into the sport. You know? Yeah. yeah. He's, like, he, Big deal. He's never done it, but he's always like, hey, man, like, can I go? I'm like, yeah. I got to get you some stuff. Yeah. So he finally got it and uh, hooked up. So I'm excited to see how that goes. You know, that's awesome. I got seen certain, Colton this morning. Drug him out there. Yeah, the I got a certain spot that I know that I can at least shoot one for sure. Yep. So we yep. won't be skunked. Like, <laughs> that's awesome. Got to make sure he, you know that one falls at him. So, dude, I one of the things I really want to do, which I don't think is going to happen because of just our life and stuff right now and job transitioning and all that stuff, but. Uh, I want to do like a youth hunt and make a video out of it, but like that would be no, sweet. I would love to do that. I actually so cool. Recently, I can't remember who it was. Recently, somebody posted that they was doing that on the North Florida page mm-hmm. or something similar, not the exact they same thing. They do a big one at and I, and I I reached out to him and offered. I like, told him I would the next one I would be uh, come film that for him. I I so I like to do like stuff for kids and new people for yeah. sure, man. I Unfortunately, I, I feel like I get too many new people in, and now, like, some of my spots have been, like, <laughs> messed with, and I'm like, dang it. Yeah, but yeah, that's part yeah. of it, you know. But it's so satisfying. You know, it's a double-edged sword, but it's so satisfying. And really, at no, the it is. end of the day, it's like, unfortunately, like, the gain more access, that's what's got to happen, you know. Yep. Because yeah. especially in a state like Florida, man, that's getting, like, I mean, I think I heard it one time, a thousand new people move here a day. Yeah. Like, the, I mean, Florida, for a state that doesn't have, I mean, it's a fishing state, you know, yeah. so it's like the waterfowl is like second fiddle to fishing. So yeah. it's like, I mean, we're fighting for everything you have. Well, Florida, you know? they, around this area too, there's a lot of horse farms. Mm-hmm. So like, and there'll be ducks down in the little ponds on the horse farms and stuff, but like, who wants to have shotguns around blasting at that um yeah. seven o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. around some horses so yeah. it's hard you know what i mean it, it, whatever you find you kind of gotta keep it to yourself you know yeah. what i mean yeah. well in the north florida i deal with you know everything's a deer lease mm-hmm. and they're like don't shoot my deer but i'm like man i'll be in the swamp pushing the deer out of the swamp like yeah i don't know to me that's common sense i can't tell you how many <laughs> mornings know. we've already had it happen this morning or this year mm-hmm. um shooting ducks i mean having a banger and then yeah. it gets slow for 10 minutes and here comes some deer that's so I hey killed, i killed deer in the duck that's line a, all the that's time. a uh, <laughs> that's cool, you hey, see me that, shoot that, one yeah, that, that, that's a uh, story yeah. to be told right you there you know you can do we were shooting ducks, into, shooting ducks and that we're four point. yeah yeah a four point walked out and i, I, I was in i didn't even know i'm sitting here looking for the birds and and he i, I just see ryan out of the corner of my eye I turn around and go bam like I'm like, yeah. what? Did, what'd you shoot? There's a deer back there. <laughs> I'm like, wow. You know, that's just 
it's just part of it, man. You know what I mean? That's the fun of it too. Well, what's cool is like you come to Florida and like I got a spot you can shoot ducks, deer, and catch bass. You yeah, know, all at the same time. All like, at the same but time. You, man. you can do like redfish, gator hunt, and shoot ducks. Like there's so much you can yeah. do. I can get. I get why people want to come, and I don't hate on nobody. For yeah. It. Like that's why I still try to help everybody I can get in, and that's right. I don't give them pins, but. Apparently, I gave a little too much information. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell you what's real different is uh, hunting a dog. Yeah. yeah. You know, I've got a dog yeah. you saw him today. Yeah. Dylan's got it's some hard. fine dogs. Yeah, I've got, got some good that, I've got, got some good dogs. You gotta be selective where you bring them, man, because yeah. the gators, yeah. the deep water. Very selective. There's a lot of gators around here. Uh at the least, you know, we can run a dog. We have dog stands up at the least that uh we can put a dog in there. We haven't really seen any in there, but we we keep an eye on it all year. You know what I mean. Mm. So you never want to put you never want to put like your dog in that situation. Like you are like his owner, so and you're supposed to protect him. So you don't ever want to put him in a hole with a bunch of gators that yeah. you you know. Plus the cotton mouths. Yeah, yeah, cotton mouths. I mean, it's just. I don't know. My dog decided that I'm still the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, he's good for one, and after that, he's like, "All right, I'm going to the boat." That's hilarious. <laughs> Every dude. time, like he does, he's listens so well, but he's one and done. <laughs> well, hey, I mean, that's cool for you know. I, one of I guess two. that's because I can only usually shoot about two. Yeah. So he's, like, he's like, "You got this." Yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah. "Daddy, you get that one. Come on now." Yeah. I prefer yeah. to just have somebody pick him up. Like, like right. this morning, your dad. Yeah, yeah. 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 You can tell him left or right. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. He found him pretty good. Yeah. Back. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, it's funny. We uh, we always joke, like, especially the Arkansas guys are like, Tony, Kennel. Like, hey, Kennel up. Let's go. We got to go. Because yeah. for, for some reason, man, I don't know if it's just like because we're gathering the film shit or what, but it uh, always seems, especially my dad, but me too, like, we're always like, the ones that are like running slow, you know how. Yeah, like we're yeah. always running no, slow. I, yeah, <laughs> like, I will say I will say this uh, about Ryan. <laughs> I, I you you run slow. You, I heard that, so I, I run slow too. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of the same, but uh, we didn't I didn't know this about until seven, and he was supposed to be there at five. <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm 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 way behind. But whenever whenever I get here, it's like a a switch. Mm-hmm. It it, sw- it switches right on, and like. Ryan can wake up at five o'clock or four thirty, be out the door in the truck rolling four thirty-two, yep. like not yeah. less than two minutes. And I so remember half the. Trip. I had to learn that like, when Dude. when I got here, I had to like adjust like at the when because when I first got here, he kind of waited over me, waited over me, and I was like, damn, really, really, I'm rushing, but so I had to adjust like. It must be as soon guy. as you wake up, out the door to the hole. It must know? be a guy thing, dude, for real. Cause y'all are so used to do. I mean, I, I mean, hunt every day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like you get. He's he like in the woods every day, every day. Yeah, cause I'm like I try to do my best, to like you know, know where my shit is and like get ready quick. But it's like sure enough, it's like where's my headlamp? You know, like something, something yep. like that. But yep. it always happens. This year, I've been the guy that hit that snooze button about twice, dude. And it's like already dawning on me, like. I've gotten really adjusted to uh, this nice little hole I got by uh, where I live, uh-huh. and uh, I leave about ten minutes before light and go in, do my thing, and go to work, and that's it, or go back that's to sleep. To yeah, because yeah. I've been lazy this week or this year, this hunting season. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. I will say I have been blessed to hunt just about every weekend that i've yeah y'all put in way more work than I put in. <laughs> let me tell you dude, so I, I we're, we're at speak. it man well that's the thing that's the that's the game it's it's all fun to us so like we live it you know we want to we that's what we want to do every day when i even when it's not season and i'm at work working you know i'm thinking about birds like you know yeah. where where are we gonna where are we gonna hunt you know and who are we gonna hunt with this year? You know, it's just you know who we're we gonna meet. You know, what I mean, it's we're always thinking about it. It's always on our mind. I hate to say it, but when season's over, it's like a weight lifted off my shoulders. Like yeah. I don't have to stress anymore about where they're gonna be. Yeah, there is pressure. There's pressure there. You and then know. after about three or four days, I miss it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's just interesting outside looking in, man, because it's like something that you know we all love so much. It's like when you do it all the time, and especially when. You know, you got the pressure of clients coming in or things like that. It like definitely it can I've seen it like from my like from Kay and our good friend that runs out there by 
when duck season's about done, he's like, I'm ready for snow goose and turkey, bud. Like, I'm done with <laughs> yep. ducks, you know? So, I totally get it, man. Yeah, I man. can see it just wearing, you know? Especially it's a little, when they start acting relief. stupid. Like, yep. toward, you know, if they get shy at the end or whatever, yep, you know? Yep. 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 So, uh, hold up. We good. All right, guys, we're back. We just take it, took a little uh, pee break real, bit, real quick, but we're back. Um so Dalton uh, had to jet real quick, but he wanted to hop on here real quick and say what's up. And uh, we got Tony on here, uh, my, right. my, my, <laughs> my co-host of the One Hell of a Life, and also uh, damn right. and also my father. So damn right. Uh, <laughs> but um, no, um, Ryan has brought up a really good topic about etiquette and the duck duck blind, duck marsh, and all that good stuff. So we're gonna get in a little bit of that and. Uh, Pick Tony's brain, which I'm sure is full of all kinds of funny stuff, and uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, all right, so let's start it off with this. Number one, and this is my rule on etiquette: if you have a different attitude than this, you just probably just need to. Sometimes you got to shut the f up. Shut the f up. You, you've seen it, but seriously, if somebody is doing something stupid by you chances are they're not educated correctly or they're brand new. I would say nine times out of 10, there's always going to be an asshole. All right. There always will be. But if you just take the time to say, Hey man, sneak over there and real quick and just say, Hey, get over here. We'll help you out. We'll shoot some ducks. And let me tell you how to hunt this place, you know, or whatever, you know, I mean, they're making the same kind of effort you know, on public land. And so that's what the only thing I wanted to open up with this is that that's, if you don't have that right kind of attitude, you'll never get it, yeah. you know? So, well, yeah, man, I wanted to dig into what, what y'all think. I mean, you're a guide here in Florida and, uh, Dylan, you hunt down here a lot, obviously as well. You know I mean? Like, I don't know where, if y'all had any stories or anything y'all wanted to get into, but what are your thoughts on that, man? I mean, uh, I don't hunt public, but a few times a year, mm-hmm. but when I do, it's, it's a cluster. It's frustrating. Yeah. Mm. People setting up on top of you. And if somebody's there, they beat you. I right. mean, find yeah. somewhere else. First Don't come, ruin first somebody else's or, hunt. Yeah. I mean, there's ducks elsewhere. Yeah. Right? That's not the only place to kill them. Right. But That's right. I don't know. I mean. We got, yeah. we, we got to make some changes. <laughs> yeah. and, and I think that's what we're also passionate about is that, you know, we just want to get the right message out. And if we do it enough. All of us, you know, just like Dr. Duck and them has got that same team thing going on right now. And I think it's an awesome, um, it's an awesome um, uh, um, um, movement, I guess you should say, because we are all on the same team. And if everybody just keeps preaching that same message, we're going to lead, we're going to weed out all you assholes. I mean, it's just, it's a numbers game. It's going to happen. Yeah. And, 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 and God always wins. I mean, let's just face it. And if we just keep pushing that positive message, it's going to overrule all that. And I think there's such a movement right now for that, um, that either you're doing it because somebody taught you to do that the right way, or you've been sick of doing it the other way, you know, or, or maybe you got into the sport with somebody bad and now you see this other brighter side and you're like, dude, I could have fun doing that. You know what I mean? If that's the way it is. But my first experience was not that way, you know, or whatever. So, well, you know, I think like for somebody like you, Ryan, or like Kate, or somebody that's grown up, and I don't know about you, Dylan, but um, like we didn't grow up duck hunting, like we grew up deer hunting, and like so from a deer hunting etiquette perspective, like we obviously understand, it, and you know, a lot of it's similar. Don't set up close to people, like you know, there's some fundamental things there, but I think what duck hunting is seeing. In the last 10 years, people call it the Duck Dynasty, like, you know, whatever. But uh, it's, it's exciting to get into. It's fun to get into. And people get into it because they want to shoot birds and do this, like, you know, it's a cool thing. It's fun. But, like, people, like, that have done it their whole life, there's these certain, like, unwritten rules that people that are just getting into it, unless they had, like, a good mentor or a you know, father figure, somebody is showing the ropes. Like they're yeah. not learning these yeah. things. Unless... I think a lot of people are getting into it for the wrong reasons yeah. too, you know, like, and if you get into it for the wrong reasons, you're not going to learn the right way. To mm-hmm. do it. Well, and the wrong reasons are led by a lot of the wrong people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's got a lot let's, to do let's with it. And there's it. plenty of people that know better and still yeah. will come and still, try and yeah, set up on you. It's a good point. Yeah. It's greed. I mean, it's, 
Or and then when they do set up on you and you can't do nothing about it, they're sky blasting birds. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's ruining your hunt, and they're flaring your birds. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just yeah. Just because your shell box says fifteen hundred fifty feet per second, I yeah. mean you can shoot that. Yeah, far. yeah. exactly. And a lot of people don't know that. Tone yeah. it down yeah. a little bit. No, and I'll tell you this. <laughs> That's funny, man. I'll tell you this. The environment I grew up in, and, and you know, and this is in you know, the land of the giants, Illinois, deer hunting. You know, we would hunt public land back then in, in the 80s, 90s and stuff. And everybody knew where everybody was. That's what's crazy. We would have Thanksgiving together when we camped up there. and But we all respected each other's. I always say you can't piss on your own public land and own it. You know, but you respect somebody that has put in the work, yeah. even if it's years and years and years. And we got a spot that we've shot probably 50 60 deer out of and like 13 different people which is incredible to me mm-hmm. you, it's like no it's it's a legendary stand called diaper rash and it's once you yeah <laughs> once you walk out there you understand why we call it diaper rash yeah. right it, it's a walk but guess what that's why it's so good yeah yep. you know and uh but we all knew where each other were so it was kind of a safety thing yeah on, on top of that but we all respected each other and knew that hey let's say um I shot a deer and it went down. Uh, we used to have this field, Hayden's, if you listen to this, um, Hayden's field is what we called it. It was a plot, but we called it Hayden's field because his whole family has hunted it for years and nobody hunted it. And, but if you had a shot a deer and it went that way, you didn't go looking for it until you talked to Terry, yep. you know what I mean? And those kinds of things, but you'd always have somebody from public land walk up on you. But again, I think they're part of that population. I was talking about same thing with duck hunting. It's, it, they don't know any better. Mm-hmm. They just want to come to Arkansas to shoot greenheads, to see epic wildlife proportions of animals in migration, and get, and drink bush light. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and by the way, you guys owe us because we... This one was the first person to do this with blue and teal. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, Dalton witnessed. Dalton, Dalton, Dalton witnessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, took, I posted that picture with the latte too, and it was a perfect match. <laughs> <laughs> no, ever since then, my killing shirt. I got this cut off bush light, like uh, just cut off, and that's like my killing shirt. Like, yeah, I usually wear that underneath stuff. Like, yeah. no, no, but but the point I'm making is, is that we all knew where each other were, and I'm talking about. A place that was like, imagine going in to sign in in the morning, go on your a bow hunt for your first time in Illinois, man. You've heard about the land of the giants, and you go to sign in three hours before sunlight, and there's 175 people signed in <laughs> to a 6,000 acre piece of property. You're like, mm. dude, mm. what? Yep. But guess what? Here's what happens. That stuff comes in rushes, and this is what happens all over. It, it's a repetitive process with, with public WMAs that get overpressured. What happens is it goes in spurts. And so I can guarantee you, at least just in Illinois numbers I know from, from public land hunting, that every other year is when it was bad. <laughs> it, because people would go, oh, and sometimes it was a couple years if it was really bad, if there's so many hunters. Because somebody, I mean, think about it. If you live in Pennsylvania and you're like, I want to go to Illinois. You're talking public land a week, easily three thousand dollars. That's a lot of money and a lot of time off work. And you go, dude, you're not going to go do that if you went into a circus mm-hmm. when you went there. So it it does that on all WMAs actually. Duck hunting, same thing. You know, it, it can do that. So, but no, um, but the point is, is that you know, there's if we all work together like that. And let's say I I, th- I thought about this as an idea. I haven't thought about the negative parts of it, but what, let's say if you get up to a WMA and they have a map and they have so many pins and you only get to hunt there if you have a pin, yeah. just like a draw. Yeah. But still, if you want to get there seven days ahead of time, go ahead. You'll get number one. Still do that thing that Arkansas is famous for. Cause I, I think so many people are passionate about playing that game. I want to win. Yep. You know, I want right. that hole. Yep. You know, that kind of thing. Um, I like to do that not as much as I used to <laughs> because I'm old. But anyway, but if you have all these pins and you're just like, dude, this is where we're going. Bam, right there. Everybody is, it's a known bought in fact that you respect where that person is. Yep. And it's, and you have it in sectors. 
and it's all cut off. And as soon as somebody puts their pen in that sector, it's no different than looking on that map and picking the county. You stick it in your county, you don't, you don't, you respect that buffer zone. You know what I mean? And if we all did that, dude, it would be like easy peasy. Yeah, it would. Sure. I mean, it really would. I mean, it's Social not, I haven't thought about the negatives. kind of ruins a lot of that, too. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, p- p- Snapchat, right. mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It, 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 nowadays, you got to watch, like, when we film, mm-hmm. it's hard filming because we don't want to show our spot. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> especially on public, you know. Because yeah. young boys are coming there. No, I mean, nothing against them. I mean, I'm glad they're hunting. Mm-hmm. Yep. But like he said, you know, you got to you gotta learn to respect. You know what I mean? Because they'll come in there and they'll, they'll, they'll hunt, post up maybe on 150, 200 yards next to us. Mm-hmm. And we might not even see them, but they'll shoot early. Or something, you know what I mean? They'll shoot before light. I'm jumping in and messing up the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? What can they? What, in your opinion, is what they should do? If you're a new person coming in, what? I mean, this how is, far this should is they be? Again, by the way. Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> Anyways, how far do you think? Would you be comfortable? I mean, what what, what do you think etiquette is? Different. You know what I mean? Because like, I mean, I because I don't want to sit here. And like FWC is everybody. already doing the. You can't buy your license without a hunter safety course. You know what I mean? So that's one step that they're doing. But for... Yeah, I but mean, he could still... Like, if he doesn't have a hunter safety course, he can still hunt underneath me. So... In some I cases, that's how that a works. couple hundred yards is fine because that's yeah. all you've got. Yeah. Like I think... Public marks, yeah, like, a, like be, a 300 yard? I mean, what's a good... I mean, you know, etiquette thing to take because there's a lot of people that don't know that we we're sitting yeah. here talking about. Yards, know. I'd we should probably with. tell them, like, hey, we're here, sure, here yeah. you got five guys. This is what we think. And if... That's not enough. Then I'm happy know. with 300 yards. Yeah. Most I mean, 300 places. yards, like where I hunt, well, I would be so happy. Yeah. But yeah. it's a little far stretch. I could see how it could interfere. But, you know, you, you ride by that person in the morning if you happen to see him. Like, hey, man, I'm going to set up here. You think it's going to mess you up? You know, like, what's etiquette in yeah. your perspective? Like, me, well, if, if someone stopped. Nowadays, if, if someone somebody stopped, stopped they'd be said, like, hey, you know, they would probably be like, no, nah, we don't want to do that. If someone stopped and I'm hunting a certain spot and they're like, hey, are you cool if I set up over here? The first thing I want to do is offer them to hunt with me. Yep. Like, that's us. Because that's they us were part. cool like, enough are you to and us, have that's respect. A, so that's an how we thing. That's, you know what I mean? Like, but, it could turn out and make friends off of it. Yeah. Like, instead of just being, you know, the person that just does it anyways, at least holler. And you know what? If you get into an altercation over that and a fight, whatever. Yeah. Like, you did your part. And yeah. like, if, they, if the other person wants to be that then you just do what you I, I think do. it goes back to what tony said there's a lot of dicks out there uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and everybody's got an opinion like they got an asshole so do you want coffee that doesn't suck get the duck dirty duck coffee is made specifically for the waterfowl enthusiast enjoy flavors like morning wood dark dynasty cinnamon teal snickerdoodle and first flight to unlock the flavor that you'll enjoy in the blind for years to come our friends at Dirty Duck Coffee Company are now offering all Zero Duck 30 followers a 15% discount when you use code Zero Duck 15 on your next order. On Arkansas WMAs, you got to be off the water at 12. Yep. So, okay, if you're going to scout. With a shell limit, right? Uh, some places shell limit. Yeah. This place didn't have a shell limit. No. I think shell limit's a good thing. I do too. Yeah, yeah, yeah especially definitely. Like a 15 shell limit, four mallards. If you can yeah. kill you six, man. I mean, yeah, well, I mean you come can only on. kill four mallards. Yeah. So it's By like, the way, there's AI audio but, technology that they're using that can count how many shots are going off. Yeah. yeah so and it automatically processes it all through a computer. The, wow. It alerts the, app, actually, the, the DNRs. So, you know, actually, I'm going to kind of tie this into a question that I had for y'all down here. But that was one thing I wanted to bring up to y'all. Everybody um, loves Raymond. <laughs> one, one thing I wanted to bring up to y'all back to the etiquette thing is like, um, you know, a lot of people, a big topic here in Florida is like everyone's got these mud m- motors and stuff. And then and you run through the birds and all the birds go up flying and then the birds aren't there anymore. So that's can, why the birds were this morning where we hunted. Mm-hmm. That's why they're there because the public like next door mm-hmm. got ran through. Well, when talk, they were scouting. talk about that, man. Like talk about like when you scout, like what is the proper way to scout you when know? i scout a lot of my spots i don't even bring a boat mm-hmm. i can just watch from the hill with binoculars yeah and yeah. just see what the birds are doing see where they're landing mm-hmm. you know what they're eating already and mm-hmm. we just we make a plan based on that but yeah yeah no absolutely and i think um that's where i was kind of going with that whole thing about like the etiquette of like scouting is like uh 
watching from afar, like kind of what you were saying, you know, yeah. and like not yeah. screwing up the birds, but like, I don't know, say like Arkansas makes it tough when you got to be off WMAs by 12, you know, that's, that's kind of rough. Cause then it's like, well, what are you yeah. going to do? Yeah. But yeah, man. Um, so dad, what's going on? <laughs> you know, you guys know I always got something going on. <laughs> All right, you guys want to talk about something? Let's talk about um, technology. Okay. Technology changing the landscape of what we do. All right. How many of you have been out there duck hunting and have seen a drone? Yeah, when on places that you're not supposed to have. Where you're not supposed to see a drone. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. I I'm, 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 I'm pushing for a uh, petition. I'm making it official right now that I will be approaching Congress. Yeah. <laughs> I will be approaching my state representative. All right. I will be approaching the president of the United States. And we are going to outline a plan that's going to eliminate that shit. <laughs> uh, and that's that's the bottom line. Well, well, hey, if you can if you can get in touch with them and make that happen, I will definitely be there to support that. <laughs> on on public lands, on, private, on, pub, on public lands only. On private land, y'all do whatever you want. It's yeah. private land. No, no, government does not need to be involved. No, but for real, let's but, talk about let's talk about technology. Now we're going to skip gears a little bit here, and because uh, a lot of us that are that are waterfowlers, we're also uh, deer hunters, right? A uh, big portion of us are. And so I brought this up before. He, he gets sick of me talking about it, so I'm going to keep talking about it. And that is this. All right. So you have your primitive weapon people, right? All right. People even do, you see on YouTube, they even spear hogs, right? Out of a tree stand. Ah! Doing just like, like Native American style. <laughs> Smoke them. That's cool, right? So we all just like have that inner hunger for the primitive side of it because of our forefathers doing it that way. So we listen to music that way. We eat old school food. We, we do all that. That's what we, like us as humans, I think we, 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 we uh, embrace that, right? So when I started hunting, you know, it wasn't long after that you had wooden arrows. I mean, we had aluminum arrows, which was an incredible thing. Easton's always made great arrows. You know, we had compound bows. I had a whitetail hunter too. You know, you didn't have a peep sight. You know, you didn't have a release. You had finger tab and you lined your string up with your bow sight. All this stuff, right? Well, anyway, I'm, well, here's where I'm going to fast forward to going with this. So now, all right, think about this. We didn't have trail cameras. How we was able to tell if a deer was coming through is we tied a piece of, 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 of thread across a deer trail. Yep. And then they came out with these little time counters. That yep. would go into the thread, I into the that. thread, and it would trip the tre- the thread, and he was like, "Oh, dude, that dude came by three fifty four p.m." You know, even heard this. yeah, yeah. So that was just kind of the cool technology was going. There was no grunt calls, there was no rattle bags, all right. None of this shit. No scent lock. No, no <laughs> scent lock. None of this stuff, right? And people smoked beer, all right. Mel Johnson's nineteen sixty four typical record. Was a record for years, bro. And he shot it in a flannel shirt. All right. Probably only 10 feet off the ground or something, you know? Like my mom, she she was eight feet off the ground. She smoked, she was, she probably was part of the Winston Cup back in NASCAR days because she, she like led Winston Cigarette Company, I think, for smoking <laughs> cigarettes. Dude, she did. And dude, she sat eight feet off the ground, shot her 17 pointer at seven yards, mm-hmm. eight feet off the ground, dude. That's like, you can almost like jump on them, yep. you know? But, Anyway, here's my point. If you, the, if you, that primitive side of that, okay, is technology removing the art of the sport? Or is it just, hey, this is cool shit. It's technology and it makes it easier for me. But how easy does it have to be that it starts to take away from all those things that make you work hard for something. Like we talked about yep. duck hunting, you know, and that's, that's what some people are passionate about. It's like, dude, it means so much more when you- It's more have, rewarding. It, yeah, dude, it's more, re- same thing. It's no different yeah. with, with, with the, the way you approach a sport. So I'm just saying, maybe y'all take it, I think it could be a great thing for you, especially if you've gotten kind of a little flat 
and, and your passion for like, say deer hunting, but it could apply to duck hunting too. But if you're, you're getting kind of flat with that, take a step back into a little bit, maybe less technology and start to grasp those things that built that fire in the first place. Yeah. Well, y- y'all talk about that kind of what your thoughts are from that pers- you know perspective, because like that's something we've dove into like in depth between me and him on the podcast. Mm-hmm. And you know, there's perks of both, you know, like, yeah. on x and freaking hunt wise and all that stuff yeah. great for yeah but you know we love some, hunt wise it's some double edged sword, yeah. double edged sword right yeah because yeah. yeah. you're not the only one with it yeah, yeah. that's right <laughs> mm-hmm. i don't know i have a whole thought on this mm-hmm. i think that um everyone that's using all the technology mm-hmm. use it please <laughs> learn as much as you can do see, all, I see do all, it listen do only hunt all your stuff through electronics because when the apocalypse happens, or when any of this crap with all this stuff going on around the world happens, facts. we're going to know who can hunt and who can't yeah, hunt. Right. Big facts. facts. Because you're going to lose a lot of weight, and I'm not. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Hey, well, that, I mean, that was kind of the way, way I look it. at it. We're at this point in our country and time that go for it, pal. Hey. Learn the wrong way. for. Don't listen to the old guys. Can we get Dalton 2024? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dalton 2024! I, I don't think I can promote who I'm voting for, but <laughs> I'll, I'll stay off of that one. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's anyways, cool. that was just my two that was, cents. That was great. <laughs> that was great. That was great. But no, I, I think there, there's two sides of the fence to it, so I just wanted to talk about it and just kind of, what do you guys, I mean, let's just walk through each one of you. Like, be honest about how you feel about it. I'm just saying you don't. You can do whatever you want. All right. It's just like you hear about the big craze when everybody came out with the what's the it's it called with the big turkey tail where you walk behind it and walk up the shoot turkey. and scoot. Yeah, shoot that's and scoot. That's been a controversy. All right. So that's been a big tail. controversy in the turkey world, right? It's making it too easy. You're taking away from the sport. Yeah. So it's, are you doing that yeah. by setting up grain bins for your white-tailed deer and you go on TV and you're like, hey, look, I shot 190 inch deer. Yeah, you better. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, you better I mean, the amount of money you put into this yeah, shit. Yeah. Of course you better. And good for you. That's awesome. All right? I think, I'm, not, I'm not taking anything away from people that do that. I've been yeah. on both sides of the fence. Yeah, I think, you know, what it comes down to, like, I can look at something like dog hunting or something that I don't really like. For me, it doesn't do anything for me. I do. I don't want to kill a deer that's being chased by dogs, you know, or whatever. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's like as hunters, like we need the funding and we need people to buy licenses and we need like we we need all of the, all of us, you know, to keep this thing going for our kids and so on and so forth. So it's like at the end of the day, it's like your cup of tea is kind of yeah. You know, We're all hunting at the end of the day. Yeah. You know? That's right. We're right. All hunters. So- so, so on the same technology thing, and this is where I'm going to really spark a fire with everybody here. And everybody gets a chance to talk because everyone is going to go. <laughs> Check this out. Think about this. Long Lot, story short. Are you, if you're a logical. If you're Tony a log- hates technology. No, 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 no. If you're a logical thinker. No, I love it. And I'm a, this is on the, the positive side of, for okay. me. Check this out. I don't know if you even thought about this. But for years and years, decades and decades. The way that the waterfowl populations have been served have been by first on foot, then the use of air. They've been doing this the same way for years and years and years. There is a, there is a, almost a, uh, um, there's a method to the madness that's very scientific. I'm not taking anything away from any biologists or anything like that. But here's where I'm going with this. You've done it the same way. For years, we see, we hear this number is down. We've learned that that's an awesome thing because when we hear that a number of a duck species is down, we usually shoot the shit out of them. Yeah. Every, and Cade is the number one person that put us know, on this. I don't know if I agree with that. Green I'm wings not. are up this year. Green I wings, pintails. Wait, wait, wait. Here, here's where I'm going. That, that, that's not a whole nother subject, but here's the thing, dude. If we are paying estates, no matter what state you live in, this is what you need to get your, your mouth known about or heard is if you're paying X amount of thousands of dollars to run these aerial surveys and do all this stuff, it takes common sense to know that you can do the same damn thing with drones. All right. And the technology is there with AI and I'm, I don't, it's getting there. It's it's, I don't know if it is there, but it will be soon. No doubt. Because I've heard similar applications, 
that a drone can go over a duck population and pick out certain cues, whatever it is, whether it be sound or color, movement, I don't know, whatever it's built into it. And they will be able to estimate populations that I think is, when we really get there, I think everybody is going to shit their pants. Yeah. Because it's going to be so drastically different because we're guesstimating. Mm -hmm. And we're guesstimating on the day that we do it or the weeks that we do it. And, dude, they move around so much. And they're doing, all of you do that, you're doing an awesome job because that's the way you're supposed to do it. I'm just saying technology is going to change the game. Yeah. Big time. But what flows off of that is limits are properly set. I think everybody's in this table, if we had to remove three species off because of save that duck, if we had to eliminate nine species, I think everybody sitting at this table would say, if it meant it was going to continue that my kid gets to hunt those ducks, shut it down. Yeah. I think everybody at the table, we would all shut it down. So anyway, I'm excited about what you all get to see and your kids get to see with this technology stuff. It's going to be really cool. And what you guys, what, what they're going to be able to do with resources and money and, and really knowing what you got. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, our generation, it's really important that, and I think there's a lot of us doing this in this like social media kind of space, like, um, or, you know, boots on the ground, like you, Ryan, like, um, that are really trying to grow the sport in a way that, um, I feel like maybe in your, your generation was so good about it, but like there was the baby boomers, you lose mm -hmm. all of that. And then like, we're seeing that, but I feel like our generation's like, okay, this is a problem now. How can we like play catch up, playing catch up now yeah. a little bit in the hunting world, but yeah, no, but what do you, what do you guys just take on that? What do you think? I mean, you guys, uh, are we like thinkers? I mean, the, is, it, is it now, instead of adult in 2024, it's now Tony 2024? No, no. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, um, I think it's something that we all need to be excited well, that's about. The, the way, and the way you brought it up is more of a benefit for all duck hunters, you know, and the way, you know, that that's a benefit for everybody. Funding, but that's funding. not that's different than like the ways people are using it for personal mm -hmm. gains and go out there and in certain ways kind of limit or um, eats away like the, uh, the fun of it, you know, like getting out there and, you know, sure you can be like, Oh, this spot looks great on, on Google maps or whatever. Um, as a great spot to hunt. But like if you're not out there and watching how those birds are swooping in, you know, like observing, like what's the wind that day? Like what's, you know, like you set out all ring necks today because you thought, you know, it'd be shooting ring necks. Like those are the th little things you got to pick up on. And if you're not in the field, you're not going to learn. And I think that's what technology kind of can eat away at. Yep. But I just, I'm in the woods every day, mm -hmm. even when it's not season all year, 365, unless it's a hurricane out, I'm in the woods mm -hmm. learning. Even when the birds aren't here. And think about how valuable that is. Like, yeah. shoot. Yeah. In the outdoors, every detail counts. See sharper, aim clearer. From the river's edge to the heart of the flooded timber, Hook and Bullet has your vision covered. Hook and Bullet's purpose-built optics are flawlessly crafted to give you an edge, regardless of your outdoor pursuit. Use code ZeroDuck30 for 15% off a pair of Hook and Bullet sunglasses today. Like, it is cool to be like, I put in, like from a sport, pure sportsman's take, like I put in the, I ran the tiller through here, I planted the shit and it grew up and then now they're in here eating it. I get that like perspective of why I think that's cool. You know what I mean? So, it's no same but not everybody can. Growing afford. food plots for deer. That's exactly you know right. I mean? Yeah. I mean, that's how I feel. I'm actually like super interested in like some type of like, property management. I have a friend that just talked to me the other day mm -hmm. about like his dad was like, yeah, he, I got him in the duck hunt a couple years ago and his, they got property and his dad was like, you know, you're into this duck hunting thing. Like, let's try to make our own duck hole here. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, word of mouth right now. We're just kind of talking, nothing serious yet, but it'd be cool to like, we're going to make our own duck hole. And here in Florida, you know, no one does that. I don't know anyone that's done that. Like there's tried some, there's to, some guys down south. You know, well, yeah, uh, I don't personally know anyone that's like, went like this is my property. I'm going to dig a hole and I'm just going to figure it out and plant stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm super interested in that. And I'm so glad that like I was able, he's asked me to kind of help him out with it mm -hmm. just because that's not nothing we get to do around here, you know, plant millet. And like, I just happen to be one of, I'm a, I love wood ducks. People can say what they want, but wood, I'll shoot, wood duck bro, I will shoot three wood ducks and go home by eight anytime. 
Yeah. Shot I one mean, this morning pretty quick. <laughs> I don't even know what I shot this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. It is a woody. <laughs> Which I didn't find. Story of my life. <laughs> Dude, that, I tried. It is. That's, That's another, another thing. thing. The mudfish. Yeah. Like the mudfish uh, the, and the, the gators. They'll eat a lot of people don't realize that. Oh, turtles, turtles. A lot of times it's a mudfish. You yeah. just don't realize it. But I've seen when, their when, fins. When y'all are saying mudfish, what are y'all talking Bow about? Bowfin? Is there oh, a real Oh, yeah. Bowfin. Uh, yep. We call okay. mudfish here. Really? There's a bunch of different things. Oh, yeah. I've never <laughs> heard of them hammering We've watched ducks. them. You'll see them yep. bobbing that duck. And uh, I've seen their fins out of the water, and you can shoot at them, do what you want. It don't matter. Wow. And, uh, even if they don't get him, they pull him under that grass mat. You ain't going to find him anyway. Yeah. Never knew that, but it makes a whole lot of sense why. That's why I don't have a bunch of pictures of piles of ducks. That's exactly it. I found my <laughs> answer. With all the damn all mudfish. The mudfish. With all the oh, mudfish. Mud eating all my ducks. Well, listen, you know? just, never mind. Everything we said about coming to Florida, don't come because yeah, yeah, yeah. mudfish are going to ruin it. That's, well, that's why we didn't limit this morning. I think the mudfish ate them before they got there. I like that. <laughs> I like that take, bro. That's what, well, man, well, guys. we hey, got, on. We got a public announcement. All right, what's up? <laughs> We need to eat them wood ducks, boy. <laughs> we need to eat them wood ducks. We got we got beauty Drake and a beauty hand, and we need to cut those things into a little appetizer before we have this uh, togetherness and food and wonderful, nice bush lights. Hey, we want to say yeah. thank y'all for coming too. Yeah, man, no, man, dude, man, it. thank you for it. having us, bro. Yeah. I mean, it's all about the experience, bro. And and honestly, the biggest takeaway I'm gonna have from today is spending this time with y'all. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. I mean, this is this is what it's all about, and this is what makes us just want to keep doing more. And it's not just it's not the podcast; it's what we're what we're doing, and we're just talking. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? I love it. it it's awesome, Hang you out. know. So absolutely, yeah. Thank you guys again, man. And I think we're an hour and twenty minutes into this bad boy. I think we're all getting a little hungry, so I think we're gonna wrap the sucker up but hey I, good. I want uh so ryan and dylan tell people and dalton tell people you know let's start with ryan tell people where they can get in touch with you you know booking hunts buying merch booking a damn photography session all that stuff hey get it ryan dalton doesn't marsh runner god service on instagram <laughs> if you want to book a hunt it's marsh runner god service on instagram Okay, uh, right. If you want to get out to Cut'em Boys, re- reach us on Instagram. We got uh, we got a website. Our uh, link is in the bio. Check out our merch. Uh, also, you can get in touch with Marsh Runner Guide Service through our link in our bio. I didn't get to say thank you, but I got invited as like a friend and a shooter this time, which is super cool. I haven't been able to do that with any of these guys yet. About time he bails every freaking hunt. <laughs> So I just appreciate being able to come as not working, you know, just for one time. I had a great time. But um, all my Instagram is uh, at salty shots underscore photography. Same on Facebook. Um, yeah, I definitely need to book some more. And hunts, that's not so, just duck hunting photography. That's yeah, no. wedding, anything, oh, anything you need. I don't really touch a whole lot of weddings, but I'll, I will do them when I'm hurting, which I'm hurting. <laughs> <laughs> no, if, you, if y'all are in the South, listen, if you're around the Jacksonville area, Orlando, I mean, north and everything. I mean, no, I'll do all of Florida I, for the ride. I mean, I'll go everywhere. Dalton will travel, dude. He does an awesome job, dude. I think it's just, just go check his shit out. I mean, really, honestly, that's all you got to do. Just go look at it. And you're going to be like, Durr, I need, to, <laughs> I need to book something with him. I mean, it's that simple. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. But yeah, I, I photograph a little bit of everything, boudoir, all of it. So, yeah, you're a uh, Halloween scary, freaking sexy. Dude, those are those are like my top rated every year. I guess I like, I like I'll be scrolling through, bro, and I'll be like I'll see my wife like this like pic you posted, like this chick in like a thong or something, with, like a bloody mask or something. I'm like, that's cool, but I can't like that. Like, I want to have Paige on the podcast. I want to hear Dalton to talk about the whole photography session. Period. Dude, not in a weird way. Me and my wife really enjoy doing that together, and like. There's been so many, not like taking this away from sexual that I have to do no, now. It's, it's like in a professional manner. Right, like sure. we don't like it's, it's so much fun and just everybody like, and especially making someone feel good. Like we don't like I've done male boudoir as well. You know, like it's kind of different, but you know, all around just making somebody feel good. I don't know, man. Something about that. I just like good, positive vibes. And if sexy is what you want to feel, <laughs> I hey. I do pretty good at making. And that guess happen. what? And, and, and the the pictures speak louder than words because the whole reason why we're talking about it is we've all been like a little like wow. <laughs> but, but book a duck hunt with me because I really enjoy 
the uh, waterfowl and a deer is kind of hard because it takes a lot of time. But I really, if you just want, you know, a, a little, one little weekend, you live in North Florida, that's uh, not crazy expensive as you probably think. But anyways, enough of my plug. Back to you. Yeah, man. Well, thank you guys so much again. We had a blast. Um, thank y'all, y'all. It was fun. Y'all even freaking gave us a spot to do this podcast on the road and we put this thing up and <laughs> I thank you so much for that too. And, um, you know, weather permitting, hopefully we'll get out a little bit in the morning and Smash see what happens. Yeah, I hope so, man. We'll see. Hey, and we always, we always, we, we're starting to end every video with everything, with the same uh, saying every time. It's one hell of a life. I've been sucking, <laughs> I've been hellbound, riding on the midnight train. Going too fast now, think I'll slow down, standing in the pouring rain.